I've been drawing a lot of late, and I wanted to show you something fun. I don't know how many of you have ever used a ruling pen, but these are great tools for having incredibly precise control over your line thickness and weight. So you can dial it in by opening the screw knob, make it a nice fat line, or you can bring it down to an incredibly fine line, and then you just load the pen with ink and draw with it. The pen itself holds the ink. The danger always is, is that the ink can flow out and make a mess, ruin a drawing, whatever. But people that mastered, especially old time draftsmen, mastered ruling pens and made the most incredibly beautiful drawings with them. So stealing that technology some years ago, I started to make my own version of ruling pens, admittedly a lot cruder. <laughs> and basically all they are is dowels where I bandsawed a slot in them and the slot holds the ink and in case the sticks are too far apart you can control how far together and far apart they are either by using an old rubber band which is what I'm using here and also by inserting like a, a toothpick or a flattened toothpick or even pieces of cardboard or paper so you can completely control the kerf the width of the line that you make and um, they're super fun to draw with. I normally use them with ink and they're kind of accompany my more traditional nib pens of which I have in all different sizes as well like the big round nibs, really big round nibs and all the way down in size kind of graduated in sizes. What's in here anyway? I don't even know. Oh yeah here's my nib collection. <laughs> I can just exchange different size nibs out of the pen holders. So let's head over to the shop and I'll show you how I make these. I like to make my pens out of quarter inch dowels like this little piece of scrap but I know most of you guys don't have power tools and so another easy way to do it is just to break out the old coffee stirrers. You're going to need four. You're going to glue together two pairs of coffee stirrers like that and then we're going to glue them together. I'll show you in a minute. The other thing you're going to need is, I will save the old the cardboard, this nice thin cardboard off the backs of old uh, drawing pads or whatever, notepads. And so I have this thin cardboard collection, and it makes a really good kerf line in between. So let's get to gluing. I'm using Type On, but you can use any kind of glue you want. If you don't have clamps, don't worry about it. You can just use like these little binder clips. They're great for clamps, but you can also just use tape. So now we'll cut the cardboard for the kerf, and you want to leave about a half to a third uh, of the space between the sticks so you have a nice long gap because that's the reservoir that's going to hold the ink. The clamp or tape the whole thing together and you're good to go. Once it's all dry, you can take it apart and it's not quite done yet because you need to shape it up. So we'll just trim off the extra cardboard, which you could use that for another pen. And then see that gap in there? You can, see how <laughs> you can see how warped the stick is. That's okay because you do have control over how thick or thin to make the gap in your pen when you're drawing with it. Now, again, you can do this job 100% with hand tools. You don't need uh, power tools. Power tools just make the job go faster. Uh, but you can whittle like I'm doing here to shape your pen down to a nice fine point or to the kind of point that you want. You might want a flat point, whatever you want. Uh, you can just do it all by hand and with maybe finish up with a little bit of sandpaper. Uh, but it's not hard to do. You just take your time, you know, and put uh, and get the thing whittled up to shape. Of course, if you have a belt sander, you should use it. It makes it quick and easy to shape the tip and also round over the sides of the tool to make it nice and comfortable to hold. If you also happen to have a bandsaw, the quick way to make these pens is to just use quarter inch dowels. I cut them to whatever length is convenient and then cut the kerf on the bandsaw. Notice I'm not using a jig or a fence or anything fancy, I'm just cutting it by hand and that gives me a pretty ragged kerf which I think actually helps to hold the ink. And what I love about these pens is that they are capable of delivering a very expressive line. So dip it in the old ink well and they can do a very fine line, a very gray line, or you can make the line thicker. Just by tilting the angle and by how much you load the pen with ink, you have a lot of control over the kind of line you make. And you can get a lot of variegation in line, 
or you can get really smooth, clean lines. It just depends on how you load it up. By varying the water, you can develop, you can get grayer or darker lines. By holding the tip up straight, you get the blackest lines because you flow the highest amount of ink. What the pen delivers really depends on how you hold it and how you control it. You can be pretty careful with it, or you can really, you know, be rough and aggressive. And uh, they're a lot of fun to draw with. There's some real resistance at the tip, so they definitely are not as smooth as like a mechanical type pen. They'll give you a rougher, more kind of organic line. Because you're making the pens yourself, you have a lot of control over what the pen delivers. You, know, you can draw with the side of the pen or with the very tip. To make really ultra thin lines, I'm letting just the weight of the tip hit the paper. I'm not pushing down at all. Anyway, you can see the kind of variety of lines you can make and um, huge fun to play with these. Here's one of our new pens and you can see how big that gap is, but that's why we have the rubber band. You might want to close it up a little and you can just pen it in how far up the tip you bring the rubber band, you can make the gap really small. So you can control the flow of materials. The other great thing about these pens is you don't have to just load them up with ink. You can load them up with all kinds of materials, like they have new acrylic inks out there. And of course, you can use stuff like watercolor. The pens do tend to hold on to the color. In other words, it's, switching colors is not that easy because you have to completely clean out the pen and their wood so they absorb the material. So there's always going to be some color bleed. So your options are you either use a pen, make a pen for each color or each family of color, or you just let the bleed happen. So anyway, I'm going to start with the yellow. See, oh, it's so, it's so hard to see, but I'm making a nice, smooth, wide line with this pen. I am way too lazy to clean the pen, so I'm going to step around the color wheel going from yellow to orange to red, and that way you won't be able to see any color pollution. Hey, I hope this video was fun for you and has given you a bunch of good ideas. In the next video, I use this drawing as a basis for a much more finished, much more completed drawing, so keep your eye out for that. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time.